Hello CVMBS, it's April 10th, 2020, and my name is Tim Hackett. I'm the Interim Associate Dean for the Veterinary Health System, and I've been uh, had the pleasure of working with a great number of people around this, uh, this pandemic and the effects it's had on our service areas. What I wanted to do today was take you on a bit of a tour of the Veterinary Health System, highlighting the facilities here on the South Campus and on the Foothills Campus, and show you firsthand how, um, how our staff are dealing with the staffing shortages, the lack of students, the need to do online education. It's been, uh, it's been a tremendous process to be part of. It's, you know, it's surreal, but it's, uh, it's great going through this with all of you. It's just been amazing, the creativity and the teamwork and all that's been going on. So I walked around with the camera yesterday, that was Thursday, to try to capture what was going on and I wanted to share that with you. But let's start with just a tour of the, the South Campus and then we'll move over to Foothills and show you, show you how our day went yesterday. Thanks. The oldest building in the veterinary health system is the James Voss Veterinary Teaching Hospital which opened in 1979 and has been remodeled pretty extensively since. About 2008, the Diagnostic Medical Center opened and allowed some vacated space in the VTH to be repurposed and has allowed us to continue some growth. In the distance in the green roof, you can see the Gale Holmes Orthopedic Building, which used to house the Orthopedic Research Center and now is primarily equine sports medicine and rehabilitation. While well, continuing education offerings at the Wayne McElroy Translational Medicine Institute have been put on hold, the AV team there's expertise has been really valuable during this period of online education. Diagnostic services in the TMI are still going strong and they're taking in samples and turning out results. Researchers in the TMI and at the Orthopedic Research Laboratory just below us here are facing the same problems as those around the college and around the campus. And behind the equine performance analysis facility, you can see land being cleared for the Johnson Family Equine Hospital. The veterinary health system is bigger than just the veterinary health complex. On the Foothills campus, we have the Bud and Joe Adams Equine Reproduction Laboratory. The SARS-2 outbreak hit right about the time the foaling season was at its peak. Dr. Christina Devine and Dr. Jen Hatzel are just having another day at the ERL, except for the PPE, you wouldn't know any difference. Eleven months ago, these veterinarians and these mayors had no idea that we'd be facing a worldwide pandemic. But here they are, another successful foaling season at the ERL. Like all of the service areas within the veterinary health system, the ERL is trying to get by with minimal staffing, working shifts, trying to take care of people, and trying to take advantage of all the resources of the health system where we can bring in people with experience to fill some of these roles formerly filled by students and other employees who can't make it to work. Let's head back to the veterinary health complex to see how we're dealing with our regular day. Clients don't come into the building anymore. They come to the front door um, in their cars. They're met by folks in PPE who can take histories and take their pets and we're doing everything we can to manage cases appropriately and minimize the spread of the novel coronavirus. Wearing proper PPE and caring for it when we have to work within six feet of each other even our tradespeople are taking part with appropriate PPE. Our 24-hour emergency urgent care and critical care services has been really helped by the camaraderie and the volunteerism around the hospital. Technicians and veterinarians from other services have jumped in, taken shifts, and really shown what this veterinary health system is all about. It's been neat seeing veterinarians and technicians get out of their comfort zone. What kind of cases are we seeing? It really depends on the service. This poor dog got its face caught in a fence and another dog broke its jaw, so that's not something that's gonna wait for several weeks. It's gonna get fixed today. Right around the corner from dentistry, our orthopedic surgery team, doctors Palmer, Culbertson, and Chu, are taking care of a bandage change. That may not sound like an emergency, but when it's a bandage wrapped around an external fixer or in a cat, it's not something that can wait. This team has also gotten a lot of praise from fourth year students who have taken part in their online rounds, the way that the clinicians all across the hospital are keeping students engaged in the cases that are going on that we're seeing and continuing to see throughout the hospital. Here's a guy getting a bandage change also. He's got a decubital sore on his back leg that's requiring some regular care. This dog's bit down in the back end, but the soft tissue surgery team are still taking care to keep his wound clean and to keep the bandages changed. Dr. Chan and Dr. Webb are doing I don't know what. Dr. Webb's about to tell us something, but I can't understand a word he's saying with his mask on. I can't read lips either. 
Across the hospital, faculty, house officers, technicians, student hourlies are all taking care of the patients that are still coming to our door. This hypoproteinemic dog seeing internal medicine. Where there would normally be two services, one service is generally seeing patients while the other service handles the online teaching for the fourth year veterinary student. Here Jake Davis is live streaming a surgery that Dr. Monet is performing on a pig with an intestinal obstruction. He's trying to explain to me with his mask on and I can't understand a word he's saying. But what I do know is that the students are on a Microsoft Teams site and the whole operation is being narrated by another faculty surgeon. Over in Livestock, the primary service that admitted the pig is watching the same surgery on laptops. Dr. Carolyn Benham and Dr. Rob Callen are also able to communicate with the senior students on rotation. It was a busy day over in the hybrid operating room where they had two young dogs with congenital heart defects with both severe signs of heart failure that brought in the entire cardiology and anesthesia team to deal with these today. Over in the DMC, accessions are still going on, tests are still being run, and reports are still being provided to veterinarians in the vet health system and across the state. Across the hospital, people are social distancing and finding out that PPE is not just for the biosafety level 3 laboratory folks upstairs. On any given day, you'll see Dr. Christy Mayo modeling proper attire and handing out hand sanitizer and even creating posters so that people can understand what six feet really means. Big thank you to Michelle Davis and all the volunteers who've been putting together masks for the VHS team members. Across the university, a huge shout out to the animal care team, the lab animal resources folks, the people that are coming in every day and taking care of our blood donor animals, our research stock, our teaching herd, our clients, our patients. Um, they're still here and they need us and we'll get through this, but I want to thank those who are taking such good care of all of them. Even the resident celebrities, thank you. However it is you're getting your job done, whether virtually or face-to-face -face with clients or the animals that we care for, be safe, take care of yourselves. Um, we'll see you on the other side, and thank you.